Jodo Max here once again and I wanted to do a quick tutorial video to kind of explain how to use the central control rundown clocks. So let's have a look at that. So if we come over here onto my desktop, you'll see I have already built a rundown and you'll notice I've done it in Google Sheets. How do we use Google Sheets to make a rundown? Great question. So what I've done here is I've made events I've, I've essentially, sorry, I've created a, a spreadsheet with, with three different uh, column headers and they are event time, event name and event comment. And then I've populated these with all the events that are in my show and this is a fictional show we're going to be producing today called Joda Max's News Thing. And if enough of you want to see it, we might actually do it. So looking back at this now, you'll see I've got a few segments and this is all the airtime they would give us. So it's, it is exceptionally short, I'll be honest. So we, we start at uh, 7 p.m. with our show start. Then we are gonna introduce the guests, talk about what the show's about. Then we're gonna go into segment one, which is Gareth's Adventures, where my Pomeranian explores the city of Nottingham and finds what he finds. After that, we have another studio link where I'm gonna talk nonsense, or maybe even I'll let my guest here introduce the next segment. And then we are going to go live to our musical guest, which in this case is gonna be a performance from Knife Party at Dream Beach Festival. And then we're gonna have another studio link. I'm gonna talk some more nonsense, and then we're gonna to go to segment three with me and a few of my friends, which is Corner Talk, where we talk nonsense again. And then we have the studio outro and the show closes. So let's, now we know how to create this rundown, how do we bring this into central control? So to do that, we need to first add the device to our project. And while we're at this, I should explain here that there is another variation of this device for Microsoft Excel sheets, where the process is much the same. You create the, the spreadsheet exactly like this, except the name is gonna be, except rather than pointing it to the URL of the sheet, we're gonna point it to the file path on, on the drive. But today we're gonna be using the Google Sheets version. So let's do that. And the first thing it's gonna need is an API key so it can access Google Sheets. Uh, to get one of those, uh, it is a bit of a process, but there are some excellent guides online and there will actually be an article on the Central Control Wiki very shortly on how you can do this yourself. In this case, I've already got one, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it. And then ne the next thing it will need is the spreadsheet URL. And at this point, I should comment that for this to work, it has to be set to, so anyone on the internet can view the link. If security is a concern, I'd recommend that you maybe instead use the Excel version where it's just local to the disk. Uh, however, the great benefit to doing it with Google Sheets is that it will actively refresh. And so you could have a producer or whatever, like updating the spreadsheet. And, and because, because we're using spreadsheets here to create the rundown and not software that you, you know, specialist software, any unsuspecting volunteer, you could have them do this job for you. Anyway, now I've done that, we are ready to go and have a look at how this works. Okay, so now I'm going to enable the device in central control. It's enabled, everything went well. If it doesn't, there's either a problem with the API key or the URL for the spreadsheet, or it's having an issue reading the spreadsheet and your data is formatted wrong somehow. So if I click this window for rundown clock, you'll see I've now got this in here in a really easy to use view, which is ideal for production. While we've been sat here waiting for the show to start, I wanted to show you uh, another feature of the rundown clock that I've set up. And, and once we actually get into the show, I'll explain how the rest of this works. Um, but I've set up two triggers, and this is an automation feature, especially for central control elite users. So if I go into the trigger mapping here, I'll show you what I've set up. So the device provides me with two triggers and they're event started and event finished. Event started fires the trigger when an event starts, event finished fires it when the event has finished. So you'll see I've set up here, I've set up a new condition in here and my condition is if the event name is equal to music guest, which is the name, if you remember, that's the name of our segment where we're gonna have the performance live from Knife Party. And when that happens, it's just gonna automatically transition. We'll have it fade over to that in vMix. And then similarly, I've got an event finish trigger. When that, if that's, that segment finishes, I want it to just fade back to me and that'll be that. 
But I should say I'm using event name here to evaluate this, but you could also have it evaluate this condition based on the event comment that we set up. And you can also do, I could say, if it has this in the name, if it doesn't have it in the name, if the name is equal or not equal to, there are many, many possibilities for me to do that. I always like to have a drink when I host Newswing. It kind of it takes the edge off somewhat. It's a stressful gig. So if we look at this now, you'll see we have a time of day clock and that's just counting the seconds to the top of the hour at the moment. And then I have this countdown clock, which is counting me down until my next event, which is show start. And then right now on the far right, I have this um, elapsed time timer, which counts the time that we've been in the current event for. Show starts in five, four, three, two, one. And now you'll see that our show start, our elapsed timer is now counting the time we've been in the segment and it's counting me down to the studio intro. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so great, hello, welcome to Joe DeMax's news thing. I don't really have long to say this. And then we're gonna go into segment one. And you'll notice that the great thing about this rundown view is it's showing me what we're, event we're currently in. It shows me the duration of each segment and it shows me either the time since the, an event started or the time until any event. So if I need to know to cue someone how long do we have until the music segment, I can see right here it's 15 seconds, even though that's not the very next event. Speaking of which, the music guess is up in six seconds and I'm not gonna to have to touch anything because we've set up triggers so it's automatically gonna roll that in as you'll see in vMix. Now, here we go, we fade across to this to the knife party performance and when that segment ends in five seconds, it's gonna fade back. Here I am talking, wasn't that an excellent performance? Great work from those guys, uh, all the success in the world to them. And then Studio Link Free is over. We're now doing Corner Talk, blah, 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 blah. That's pretty much how the rundown clock works. So this is great. We've seen how rundown clock can be used during a show and we've seen all the features it has. We've seen how we can use triggers to provide some automation capability. But I know there's two questions that you're likely to have. Number one, what if my events happen after midnight? Because as we've seen when we've used this, it automatically has assumed that we've just given it a time and it just assumes that that event is happening today which is fine most of the time, but what if I have events that are happening the next day? Great question. So what I would do is, let's say we, ha we have two events tomorrow, one at 1 a.m. and one at 2 a.m. So I'm gonna add these events, and what I'm gonna do this time is I'm going to specify the exact date of them, so 16.01.2022. And if you're uh, in America, it will be, of course, however you do it, month, date, day and then year. It will use your dis system, Windows display language to figure this out. So let's program that in and we're going to call this one tomorrow event and event tomorrow. And I should point out at this point that event comment is uh, essentially optional. You don't have to have it. And you'll see now we've this event has been added to the rundown and it's now counting down until our event tomorrow, which is just less than six hours away. Let's just add another one for good measure and we'll call this one mega party time and we'll call the comment. It's like being at 10 Downing Street because it's always a party over there. And you'll see as I populate that, this is automatically polling and it's, it's grabbed those events down from Google Sheets and they now appear in my rundown clock. This is great. The next question I'm sure you're likely to have is how can I, look, these production clocks are great, but they're no use to me on this interface here. I want them on my multi-viewer. Of course you do. So how do we do that? So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to add another device to our project. And this time I'm going to add the NewTek NDI output device. Let's find that NDI, NDI out. We'll have this render at 30 frames a second and we'll do a resolution of 1280 by 720. These settings aren't relevant for what we're doing today and we'll turn this on. Excellent. Now I'm going to, I've enabled it and now I just need to come into select the rundown clock device, go to control mapping and you'll see it provides me with several choices. 
So I can send any of our three clocks. I can send the time of day clock, the countdown clock, and I can send the elapsed clock. The other option I have is a really nice dual clock view which shows me both the countdown time and the elapsed time since the current event started. And that's the one that I want to have on my multi-viewer. So I'm, all I'm gonna do is target the NDI output device. I'm gonna add this command in here. And now let's just open an instance of Studio Monitor. Give it a second. And then let's point it at Central Control and it's found the device already, Central Control NDI output. And here you go, I have my countdown clocks as an NDI source and it even has alpha channel in case I wanted to use it as an overlay somewhere. And I could create more and more NDI output devices and have every one of the clocks as a separate source. Um, important to note, the name of the source actually comes from the device name. So if you want your NDI source to have a specific name, just rename the device in central control to that name before you enable it and that's what it would be broadcast to on the network. So I hope this has given you some ideas of how you can use the rundown clock in your productions. It's a really, really powerful tool. It's available for all Central Control Pro users. And if you are an elite user, you can combine it with the triggers and the NDI output and have some really powerful capabilities at your disposal. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.